My question, uh, uh, good afternoon. Uh, my question, Dr. Kovacic. Kovacic. Yeah, Kovacic, sorry. Please stand up. Regarding, regarding the balloon, I'm a bit confused about the goal or the main purpose of the balloon. You uh, put a slide showing the outcome after five years with a good uh, outcome. The main uh, time, you mentioned that it's only three months to the balloon degraded. So is the main purpose of the balloon is give time to the, for the, for the rotator cuff to heal, so it's, it gives outcome, better outcome, or what exactly? Yeah, this is a very good question, and we uh, don't have a really uh, good answer to this because we don't know how, how this balloon works if, he, if it is dissolved after uh, six months or one year. But uh, we have to distinguish between this if we use a balloon as a, as a procedure as a, just for implantation of balloon, or we use balloon in a, a junction for the rotator cuff uh, repair. So in those cases uh, where we do with rotator cuff repair, this is for protection of the rotator cuff repair until the rotator cuff, uh, the rotator cuff will heal. In the cases when we are not doing rotator cuff repair, we thought now, but this is just a speculation, that uh, in the first few months, this helps the patients to rehabilitate the shoulder and to, uh, to uh, gain the functional shoulder some way to, to uh, like uh, Manos explained, that uh, the, the preserved rotator cuff muscles uh, are going to the better condition. Thank you. Okay, next session for the same topic. Make a make one question. You put the same basket, uh, speakers, the capsular construction in the balloon. You put the same basket, a biological procedure with an artificial implant. How valid is this? I mean, I think that these are the these are two uh, different procedures, and it's difficult to compare them because uh, from the biological point of view or from uh, uh, the superior capsular reconstruction will last uh, much more. Thank you. Another balloon question? No. Now for the next uh, uh, topic, how, is there any questions for the deposition grafting of uh, non-repairable uh, graft uh, tears? Yes, please, lady. Dr. Avacci, thank you. Please take the stand. Uh, my question is for Dr. Avacci. Thank you very much for a very interesting talk. It's cutting edge. Uh, I, I wanted to know if you ever use uh, biologically enhanced scaffolds, not just scaffolds for your uh, augmentations or patches. I mean, do you ever load them with uh, stem cells or growth factors in the clinical setting or in your lab? And if you do, does this alter the healing procedure? Does it alter your rehabilitation protocol? It's a personal experience question. It's not evidence-based, but maybe you have used them already. Thank you very much for the question because, yeah, uh, <clears throat> I haven't published the study, but I've used, um, I'm using now uh, lipogems uh, from uh, adiposite, uh, adipose cells from, uh, from the belly uh, in conjunction, in conjunction to, to the repair with uh, augmentation with the patches. And I think that uh, my results, I think that they are very nice but uh, we have also a nice result with uh, the patch alone. So it's very difficult to improve this kind of results. And I don't, I don't know if uh, depend, the, the, the new result depends on the, the deposit, uh, deposit cells or uh, for the patch itself. So I, I don't know. With the PRP, results are the same. And uh, because uh, also here we can speak we can make a, a meeting for PRP and so, so it's very difficult because every kind of PRP is different, how to manage the PRP, how to prepare, if you put before, after, and so it's in fluid and, and dry condition also. So it's very difficult, but I have no results for that. I am experienced, but I'm not proficient yet. 
Just, just one, one more question about this, no. the liposuction. No, one question is enough. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, no time. Next question for Dr. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, just in, 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 yes, for uh, Jeff Milano. It's already 20 minutes, 25 minutes late. Okay. F five questions for Jeff Milano. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Uh, I have a question Where's about, uh, again, the bicep tendon. Um, I was please wondering please uh, if, like most of the degenerative rotator cuff tears involve pathology, uh, also m um, microscopically of the, of histologically of the bicep tendon. So I was a little bit confused that um, using the bicep tendon as a, as, as a graft, as an interposition graft, um, which you where you leave the uh, biceps and attached to the gland, um, does it uh, give you uh, give the patient any pain because there's still uh, tension on the, uh, on, the, on, the, on the attachment of the of the glenoid? So I was a little bit confused. That yeah, I understand your question, uh, but usually, the pain, based on my experience and what is reported in the literature. Uh, you have pain if you don't make the tenotomy. Uh, if you maintain a touch uh, the glenoid, uh, the, the, the tendon of the glenoid pole, and you make a, another attachment point on the human side without making the tenotomy, uh, below uh, your attachment on the human head, you have a tremendous pain. Mm. But if you make a tenotomy, you have no pain at all. So. I understand and I agree that all the mechanical and, and basically anatomical studies show that there are some uh, nosy receptors on the, on the attachment of the, mm. of the biceps to the glenoid pole, but usually there is no pain at all, okay. not at all. Thank you. Good. One question, thank you. Just a question, a general question to, uh, to all the people who are doing this, the super capsular construction. My question is how, it does, how does it work? Now, I understand when the arm is here, it's okay. When the arm is there, it's not pushing me down. And my question is whether the fact that, and uh, Paolo actually talked about it, the fact that you reconstruct posteriorly and anteriorly, and you make it balanced, reconstruct the, the cable, maybe that's what works. The, the patch in the middle is useless. It's just to help you to, to really balance the, the anterior and posterior cable. That's what I think. What do you think about it? Clara? Definitely not useless, of course. Definitely not useless. Proven to be not useless. Well, it's, it's, it's just, it's just <laughs> something in the middle that really doesn't do anything for the... For the it makes sense. It just, just is, a, is a bridge to balance the front and the back. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay, my, my, personal, my personal feeling, my personal uh, opinion is that uh, deltoid and, uh, and rotator cuff are uh, uh, antagonists and at the beginning of the production, so at the first 30 degrees, at this level, they work together. So there is no problem again. You know what I mean? I mean that probably this, uh, this helps uh, not losing forces, anterior and posterior, that can be, can have uh, somewhere hold uh, to, 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 and this could be, Otherwise, should be a, a, a difference, a huge difference, if you fix that in an A deduction or a deduction. Dr. Azevedo, your question, well, your answer to the completely useless procedure, uh, like I first said. Theoretically, yes. okay, okay, useless. Uh, well, it doesn't matter what you use. Well, the the idea is that this works as a, a thenodesis. So it stabilizes the glenohumeral joint and it allows it, the other muscles to gain a mechanical advantage to work and to regain the elevation. But there, I think there are other questions that uh, should be studied. Uh, one of them is the biological one, and we are using this reconstruction not only in massive, but also in biologically repairable rotator cuff tears where we, we have some remnants, we can do a partial repair, but uh, we need something to stabilize this repair. Otherwise, during the rehabilitation, it will fail because it will be under stresses. And th this tenodesis effect will uh, neutralize these stresses 
and allow the, uh, our partial repair to heal. Also, we know that some of the vascularization of the rotator cuff comes from the superior capsule. And this is why we believe that maybe using an autograft is better because we are favoring the biology of the healing of the remnants of the rotator cuff. Because as I said in the lecture, we always repair something. We repair infraspinatus, we repair the subscapulary stairs, and so, we are favoring the biology, and I think this is why this works, and this is not a balloon. This I, is... Uh, I think the key is that you repair the back and the front. That's the key. Yes. Uh, uh, well, you, we don't repair in the front, otherwise we'll have a rigid shoulder. But um, we, we repair what we have on top of the superior capsule so that it heals, because it cannot reach the footprint, but it can heal somewhere, and it will bridge, it have a bridging effect also. Uh, but mainly, it's a stabilizing effect uh, on the, the um, destabilizing uh, forces that occur in a massive or an irreparable rotator cuff tear. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Let's call that day and uh, hand over to the next chairman. Thank you very much.